Uh, today I'm honoring my friend John Hoagland, who is a uh, Minnesota farm boy who came here in the early 1970s, and he became a really successful fashion designer. The blue on the top is the sky, which represents the Buddha nature. It could represent heaven, and the, the lines are going upward, sort of pushing him up there. I'm honoring John Grange, a good friend and a priest from the South Bronx. Uh, John, of course, spoke Spanish fluently, so they all claimed him as the best Puerto Rican priest, the best Dominican priest, and the best Mexican priest, although he was Irish. <laughs> The entire Mexican community in the South Bronx turned out to honor him. And as his casket pulled away, they lined the streets and they cheered for him. One of my uh, dearest friends, uh, Diego Chico Corrales was a great boxer and um, he showcases talent on the ring, just like, you know, like an artist showcases stuff on canvas. He was willing to die in the ring to give everybody the best uh, boxing match that they came ever witness. My friend uh, grew up, you know, in a harsh environment. He came from a family that was like his father, real abusive. His career became a success because somebody actually stopped him in his tracks when he was doing wrong and told them, hey, if you want to fight, fight for the right reasons, not the wrong reasons, you know. He left a wonderful life, you know, a little girl and a, and a, and a, and a wife behind, but uh, they make him live through them, you know. Diego Corrales said he would go through hell before losing this fight. He may have. We're from Manhattan. We're from Harlem. Yes, and we have uh, two brothers. Uh, one is younger than her by two years. There's eight years difference between us. And the other is two years older than me, and that's why we're here. Our brother Mamadou, we lost a year and a half ago in a tragic motorcycle accident. This is our first Day of the Dead. He's kind of like the family uh, roots of the tree, yeah. connecting parts of family all over America that we didn't necessarily know tightly because maybe he had a job to build something somewhere and he would reach out to someone who was the seventh cousin or something. So, so yeah, his work definitely allowed him to travel. He worked for Habitat for the Humanity, so he helped people. That was, that was his nature. I'm a dancer and I wouldn't be the kind of dancer that I am if it weren't for him. He was a capoeirista. He was an athlete, pole vaulter. He was the comedian of the family. He always was able to make me look at the bright side of things and laugh and joke and enjoy a Cuba Libre every once in a while. So I, I even brought a little vial of rum today for him. <laughs> um, yeah, my daughter is two and a half and she'll wake up and talk about Uncle Do and tell me things about Uncle Do and she can... That she dreamt about. Yeah, that, that I know she dreamt about or he's come to her in her waking moments. He's teaching her the fearlessness, so. Siempre 
creo que la muerte es uh, un bofetazo para que tú puedas respirar y seguir viviendo. Eso es lo que siento ahora. Um, mi hermano era muy loco, igual que mi padre. Era un tipo muy aguerrido y engreído también, muy como consentido. Tenía todo el poder y siempre era el que abría los caminos. Entonces, su muerte ha sido así abrupta. Se murió manejando su moto y siempre se me queda esa imagen de él brillando, ¿no? Con el, con el pelo ondeándose. Y, y, nada, es... Parece toda una mentira cuando uno está en el exilio. Uno se desconecta y estos espacios a uno lo, lo renueva realmente. Y, y, y yo he tenido mucha fe en muchas cosas, pero haber perdido a mi hermano, eso significa, porque significa haber ido una parte de él. Él solamente me llevaba 10 o 11 meses, era como mi twin. Yo andaba atrás de él y ahora, no sé, siento así como que tengo que seguir corriendo para ver dónde lo encuentro, dónde le veo. no está acá, entonces hay que lidiar con los dioses y los demonios que están constantemente tratando de, de atraparte y hacerte caer en una infinidad de cosas para que te desconectes de la realidad, ¿no? Y, y las almas, ellas son protectoras, vienen y te abrazan y te quieren porque tienen una vida.